Good evening and welcome to League of Women Voters Presents. Tonight's topic is Columbia High School's options, challenges, and opportunities. With us are guests uh, Jolene Yoakum, Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education for Columbia Public Schools, Adam Dubé, Head of Schools at uh, Columbia Independent School, and Christy Wolf, President and Principal at Tolton Catholic High School. I'd like to start uh, this evening by asking you to tell me a little bit about your schools and what makes them special. We'll start with you, Jolene. That is a great question. I'll tell you, we have three comprehensive high schools and one alternative high school, as well as a career center that uh, serve over 4,000 high school students, grades 9 through 12. And uh, one of the exciting pieces uh, that I think makes us special is the diversity in our schools. Uh, we, one high school may represent 47 different countries and cultures, and uh, we are very proud of our brand new high school, Battle High School. This will be the first year that they will have seniors, and so they'll have their first graduating class uh, at, the, the, at the end of this coming school year. Um, we're, we're really proud of the increase in enrollment in our advanced placement classes and creating opportunities uh, for kids at uh, Douglas High School to um, see their, their life and their plans beyond uh, the end of high school. So many, many great things happening at our schools. Um, Rockbridge and Hickman, for example, received over a million dollars worth of scholarships for their students. Um, I think one of the, the biggest accomplishments recently in the last couple years is our focus on opportunity. And that opportunity has been a lot surrounded by um, access to high rigorous classes. So we've been concentrating in double down enrollment in advanced placement classes, as well as um, in, you know increasing uh, standards with the Common Core state standards. And we know that that's what's going to prepare our kids for the future. So Columbia Independent School is a junior kindergarten through 12th grade school. We're just entering our 17th year. Um, so junior kindergarten means we start with four-year-olds. And so all in the same building, we have students that are four years old all the way up to 18 years old. And so that, that alone is a very unique aspect of our school. Just having the opportunity for students to interact with, with students on a regular basis who are so much older or so much younger than them, it's really a... It's an amazing effect when you see um, how those relationships form. We're a college preparatory school, and that means that um, everything we do, we, we do with an eye towards what is it that truly prepares students for college. I sometimes like to say we're, we're not a college placement school, though we, we place our students in very, very good schools, um, but our, our focus is always on what are we doing to prepare students to be successful once they get into college. Um, we have a, a number of very unique programs at our school. At one, of the, one of the keys to our school is we have a very um, low student-to-teacher ratio. And so that ratio it doesn't, at our lower school doesn't exceed 18 students. Um, occasionally, we'll get more, uh, more than about 20 students, between maybe 20 and 22 at the middle and uh, upper school levels. But, by keeping that ratio low, it allows our teachers the opportunity to really get to know their students individually. It also allows them to manage their teaching load in a way that um, they can provide an individualized instruction for, for each student and challenge that student in the way that maybe he or she needs to be challenged or to support that student in the unique ways in which he or she might need to be supported. We are, a, because we're an independent school, um, that means that all of our funding is generated through tuition and from charitable donations. Um, about 20% of our tuition actually goes back out in the form of financial aid. And that allows us to um, create a more diverse school environment. Uh, over about 40% of our families receive some level of financial aid at our school. Um, we have a, a few other unique programs starting at the youngest ages. Um, starting at four years old, students can start taking a foreign language, and so they get to choose from French, Spanish, or Mandarin, and then that can continue all the way through 12th grade. Um, they also have dedicated uh, science specialists, um, art classes, uh, performing arts classes. Um, we are opening this year a, a center 
for um, innovation and investigation, and um, it's basically focused on STEM education for students, and so that will start um, from the JK level all the way up through 12th grade level. Um, global perspectives, global education, creating global citizens is another aspect of our school that's really important to us. Beginning in the lower school, each year students have a continent of study that they focus on, and then we, we carry that through um, middle school and then into the upper school, and in the upper school they have global current events, and um, we also have some um, other unique opportunities for travel for our students when it comes to the Global Perspectives program. Christy? Well, Father Tolton Catholic High School just being our fourth year, uh, and so we feel like it took us a three-year span of time to finish opening. Um, we opened in 2011 with just 52 students in grades 9 and 10. That was three short years ago. We will open this fall with about 240 students in grades 9 through 12. So this year's seniors began as freshmen. So this is the, the beginning of the end uh, of that opening phase for us. So we've, our growth has been rapid. We, are, we join a great history in this country of Catholic education. So we pride ourselves on doing both of those things well. So we focus on being Catholic. We're authentically Catholic. We do celebrate Mass and things like that. Um, and we focus a lot on, obviously, on education, so offering a rigorous um, college prep uh, kind of academic environment for our students. With We have seven AP classes offered already with great full enrollments in those. We graduated our first 19 seniors just this past spring, but we're bringing in 70 freshmen to replace them. So we've grown very rapidly. We offer 14 different MISHA sports and activities with several state champions already. So um, we're really proud of the opportunities our students have had holistically. We talk on a daily basis about helping our students develop in spirit, in heart, in mind, and in body. And so uh, developing their spirit uh, encompasses the faith component. And so that's, that's the unique opportunity that we are as a high school in Columbia to have a faith-based education. When we talk about heart, we talk about mission work and service to others. And we really want our students to graduate with a heart for serving others. Um, mind is the academic curriculum that we offer, and in body are the opportunities our students have to, to grow physically and to compete athletically. And so we focus on providing all of those for our students and educating the whole child and, and developing well-rounded citizens. Great. Now let's start back here at the beginning uh, for Columbia Public Schools. Um, a recently uh, new program is the AVID program, Advancement via Individual Determination. Tell me a little bit about that and what, uh, how many students are involved and what, what that aims to do. That's great. Uh, AVID is a uh, system that we uh, investigated and found would really be targeting our uh, academic middle. Of course, academic middle varies from one school to the next. Uh, it, it's a system in that it includes an elective class for students uh, and there's specific criteria that it's geared for for the elective class. Uh, so oftentimes first generation college going children who uh, may need some additional support to navigate the system and making sure that they have those college readiness skills to be successful for whatever they choose to do when they get out of high school. Uh, the other part of the system includes going building wide with AVID strategies and AVID strategies are really best practice strategies, uh, the acronym WICKER. Uh, which stands for Writing, Inquiry, Collaboration, Organization, and Rigor. And so uh, it has the opportunity to impact all students across the building. But in the AVID elective classes, uh, we have a section at each of our six middle schools uh, in eighth grade, and we have a section at each of our three comprehensive high schools uh, in ninth, tenth, and eleventh now. We started last year with ninth and tenth. We're growing to eleventh grade and it really impacts uh, around 400 students. So that elective class is really geared for giving them the organizational skills, the writing skills, and all of the other um, pieces of the acronym WICKER uh, to help them be successful in all classes. So that's kind of an overview of that. Great. Adam, you briefly mentioned the, uh, the Center for Inspiration, Innovation, and Investigation. Tell me a little bit more about that. What is that uh, center going to be doing and what students, how do students access that? Is it for all students? How does that work? So we received a very generous donation at the end of last school year to open a center that was going to focus on STEM education, 
as well as entrepreneurship. And so we um, we've been at work, kind of assembling it this uh, this summer. And you know, it's funny we called it CI3. We thought it was a great abbreviation, and it took all of about two days for our students to look at that and say CI3. Let's call it the Cube. And so now they call it the Cube. Um, but the the focus of the center is in the the initial phase is to focus on STEM education opportunities. So when we look at STEM education, you know, the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, we know that that's something that's important for, for all students, the skills um, that they, they should be acquiring during their time in school. Um, it's going to be very important for them going forward as they look to go into college, as well as what future careers are going to offer them. Um, the, the, I think the, the strength of the program is that, be, again, because we're a JK through 12 school, we have this opportunity to offer a continuity of experience for students beginning at the youngest ages. And so that, um, you know, even at the youngest ages, they may, they may spend some time in the center and, uh, you know, it, it could be working on a, a hands-on type of project, um, maybe problem solving, maybe um, some type of engineering project in which they're assembling things. Um, our students might do um, basic programming using Scratch, which is a, a, a basic uh, kind of visual programming language that was developed at MIT. And so they'll have the opportunity to learn some of these foundational skills during the lower school time and do some projects on their own, but then build on those so we can really scaffold them throughout middle school. So hopefully by the time our students reach the upper school, they'll still be doing, they'll still be doing projects through, uh, with the center, but some of those projects or many of those projects might be self-guided projects. Um, there's been a group of students all summer long, actually, that um, one of our parents has organized, and they've been meeting at school and um, doing everything from um, building mini robots to uh, building a hovercraft. Um, so, you know, they've been guiding those projects, and so the goal is that the center will have the resources there available, both the um, technological resources from, you know, 3D printers to um, uh, um, Arduinos, which is like a, 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 a basically a small computer that you can program and do for a uh, for like a hundred dollars. You can build a computer out of it. Um, to, you know, maybe working with Lego robotics at the younger ages. So we want to have the center have the the tools that are available for students to be able to to imagine and do their projects. Um, and we also want to be able to have the talent there. So one of the pieces, when, when I moved to Columbia, one of the things I realized is, you know, it's such an amazing city because we have so many resources available to us in Columbia. You know, we have resources that are um, available through the university, um, and then there are just other um, technology resources that exist in the city of Columbia. And so, you know, from the Missouri Innovation Center, um, um, to other tech startups, you know, um, Ready that's working with um, startup businesses. You know, we, we thought there's so much available here in Columbia. How can we take this, this STEM center, the Cube, and um, be able to connect our students to some of the other talent that's available? And so, the, you know, going forward, you know, we want to scale that up and say, how can we get our students connected to some of the other techno uh, technology um, startups and, um, and, and other entrepreneurship endeavors that are going on in Colombia, and then hopefully after that we'd like to grow it and then make the center available as just a resource for all students in Colombia. So it's not just CIS students, but that you know we can you know host a build night or maybe a build competition um, and you know or a startup competition. You know, there's um, Colombia has uh, has a a startup weekend every year and they you know and um, you know, they bring people in and they, they work over the weekend and they create a, a product and then they pitch that product to a bunch of people. And so we want to connect our students to those opportunities but then connect other students to what's available in our school. So it's a, it's a really exciting endeavor. Um, you know, as I mentioned, STEM education is, is important. But I, but I think it also works well with our strengths, not just because we're JK through 12, but because we have a liberal arts curriculum um, you know, they're still getting the, the, the critical thinking skills, the writing skills, you know, those solid communication skills that we want them to have that are successful and that are linked to success in college, um, but also getting these STEM skills that 
are going to be necessary once they leave our school and go off to college. Mm -hmm. Christy, you mentioned the growth at Tolton. Mm -hmm. um, it has been very, very quick. Mm -hmm. um, what is the capacity of the building and how are you accommodating all these new students as they come in? Well, <clears throat> we did about $2 million worth of construction this summer. So um, we had a third floor that wasn't finished. Uh, we expected in year 10 of the school, that was our projection that we would need to accommodate our growth and, uh, and finish out that third floor, but we did it this summer. So the furniture comes in just the day before school starts <laughs> and we'll get it loaded up and uh, I have scheduled classes and teachers in all of those classrooms. We added 10 classrooms and a science lab this summer. Um, and so that was the first thing we had to do to accommodate the students. We ran out of classrooms last year mm -hmm. in year three. So we were having classes in some conference rooms, um, classes in our commons, couple different places. We had classes meeting because the growth really exceeded all of our projections. Um, so that's one thing that we did. We did some other um, infrastructure kinds of things to accommodate it and, and we're um, increasing our outdoor athletic facilities as well because we know that um, kids, we gotta offer a good solid academic curriculum and we're gonna get them ready for college but the kids don't jump out of bed in the morning for trig tests or biology <laughs> class, as good as those might be, of course. Um, you know, they jump out of bed because, because they're going to districts in basketball or because there's a state championship in wrestling or, or it's Friday night and we're putting in lights on our football field. I'm pretty sure they'll be up before the first game. So they're sitting horizontally on the football field right now. But, um, but the, the community has just grown. Um, you know, the students and their families and their grandparents. So uh, this week before school starts, we're running a program called High School 101 for all of our new students. So we're spending each afternoon teaching them how to be high school students, how to manage their time, how to study, what our dress code looks like, um, how to do lunch, where their lockers are and all of that. Um, but it's, been, for me, one of the most exciting things has been to meet all of the new parents and all the brothers and sisters and some grandparents are carting kids around. So they're, they're relaxing together in our commons area while their kids are at our school. So um, we focus very much on community. Um, we are a faith community, but it's a word that's very real for us. And so um, on the first day of High School 101, we actually rolled out a red carpet for all of our students. And as they got out of their cars, the upperclassmen were there applauding them and welcomed them in and told them welcome to our school. So um, we've fostered, I hope, a very welcoming and warm community. And I think that's contributed to our growth, but um, we really had to do quite a lot um, to accommodate that. So um, we're starting this year, half of my teaching staff is new this year because it grew so fast. And we just had a few retirements um, as a few teachers left to go help their children with the new babies and their family. Um, but we added quite a few new teachers. So as I met with my teaching staff today, half are new to our school. And we've added that we've doubled our classroom capacity and adding our outdoor facilities. So it's really been a period of amazing growth for us. When I speak to the business community, I talk about 500% growth in three years is really what we've experienced. So um, it's, it's been challenging. It's been fun, but it's been challenging to keep up with that and to make sure that we have all the resources, um, the technology expansion and, and all of the resources and, and just the uniforms and the teachers in the classrooms to accommodate that. But um, I think we're doing things well. But that's why we've been growing. So our, our goal is, is to just be the best Father Tolton Catholic High School that we can be and be true to our mission and be true to our purpose and the the purer we are in our own identity and true to what we're doing and what our goals are, the more attractive that is to students and to families who are looking for that kind of education. Okay. I'm encouraged to know that you're still rushing to get things finished because it's the same way around. Okay, good. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy right now. I think you're probably all in the same boat. Yeah. I know yeah. that yeah. Columbia Public Schools is wrapping up some projects too at different schools. So, um, Speaking of uh, challenges, I know there are many challenges, growth, different things. Let's uh, go back through and talk about some of the challenges that your, that your high schools are facing. Yeah. You know, um, Christy really brings up some very important points that we face as well, and it really is about relationships. Um, all of our schools, all three of us sitting here, have diverse students with diverse needs, but we also recognize that learning occurs with a relationship. And so, one of the things that we uh, continue to work on is building that community within our schools. 
and then once you know students then you know what their individual needs are so um, one of the approaches that we are uh, taking right now is using the restorative practice umbrella of just building community in our secondary schools so you know part of that is when there's someone that's been harmed you know you can you need to react and you need to respond and meet the needs of the victim and the uh, offender however there's a lot of proactive things that we can do uh, to minimize getting to those points and um, our children come from uh, homes where parents love them very much and they send the very best that they have but they are all funneled into a public school where uh, we have to meet a very diverse group of, of needs so we feel like moving towards the restorative practices rather than just the restorative justice which is after the fact but restorative practices and how we interact with each other in our uh, classrooms within our buildings with our parents and our community is really worth an investment of focus so that's one of the challenges that we have but we also are working on a solution to that so uh, a couple of our challenges you know I, I think one as just being a college preparatory school um, there's always that challenge of you know well what what does college preparatory look like what you know what does it mean to be prepared for college in today's world with the um, with the introduction of these massive open online courses you know there's a lot being written that you know well ten years from now college is going to be completely different you know and there was a uh, uh, there's a professor um, uh, up at Harvard actually who writes about this quite a bit and how you know education is 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 changing so much post-secondary um, and so you know trying to be attentive to that and you know what are the, what are those skills that our students have to have so we you know we, we know that they still have to have the Th things like writing, you know, the, the, the skill of being able to write well is a skill that's more closely linked with success in college than other skills, any other skills that a student might possess. And so, you know, we know that that's going to be important, but what are the other skills that they need to have in addition to that? And, you know, as knowledge expands, um, trying to decide, well, what do you keep in the curriculum and what do you toss? Um, you know, and, and there's so many things that end up um, guiding sometimes the college prep process and sometimes those are really good things that you know we want to attend to like um, you know having students have the opportunity to take a course online um, and do a self-guided course or maybe incorporating a blended learning course where it's a mix of online and in-class work um, which research has shown actually has a, a, a more beneficial effect than just online work or just classroom work by itself and so um, you know sometimes they're very beneficial in that way and and then sometimes they're they're challenging like um, advanced placement courses you know they're they're part of college prep but um, but but there's so much information that's being thrown into those courses how do we decide what we really want kids to know because we don't want them to take a course for a year and then forget 60 percent of it you know even if they got a five on the AP exam um, the next year and so so that's a challenge for us as a school is you know continuing to evaluate that we have a really great program at our upper school level um, but we've struggled to retain students because of the size because it's been small we haven't had a strong um, commitment to athletics and so so you know Christie's right that that drives school spirit that that gets that gets kids um, you know excited and motivated and so communicating I guess that value to our parents and understanding that you know staying at CIS and graduating from CIS um, has a, a ton of value and you know and and we you know we, we have we have grown a bit but we have about just about 40 students in our upper school program and um, at capacity for much much more than that and so you know looking forward um, we've been growing our our lower and middle schools um, are growing significantly we have waiting lists and a uh, number of our lower school grades and so um, I, th I think our challenge for our upper school is continuing to get parents to understand and for students to understand the value in staying at CIS and graduating from CIS and the, the true benefits they experience when they go off and go, go to college and the readiness they feel and the surety they feel about themselves as an individual and the ability to kind of tap into some of their passions in ways that are really going to complement the learning that they're going to do once they go off to college. And those are the things we hear from our students once they 
leave and come back, they report that that's what they're experiencing. So we just have to continue to get um, students and parents to know that um, so that we can build our upper school because we're, we're very committed to that as a school. So for you, growth is uh, most of the challenge it at is, this point. It is, but, but I'll, I'm going to tell the truth that neither of them said, which is that, that finances are always a challenge. So oh, I'm yes, sure, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. it's true. I know that's what everybody's really thinking. But, um, and so we're a private independent school too. We are a Catholic school, but we're, we're independent of any parish. And so all of our revenue is tuition and development money, just exactly like your school is. So um, it's a struggle to um, keep our tuition affordable in the interest of justice. You know, if we're true to our mission to teach as Jesus did, then we don't say, we can't say when kids come, well, it'd be nice if you came to school here, but you can't afford it, so too bad. We, can, we won't let that happen. So to balance, we have a financial aid program as well. Um, about a third of our families receive that. But to balance the, uh, the revenue that we can bring in to keep it affordable for families, um, to raise the money that we need to accommodate our growth. Um, so really our, our struggle is, I, I don't want to say struggle, but the challenge is, is very much financial. And we are, we are a startup business. We've been in business just starting our fourth year. We've had, we've had great growth, but the challenge for us, really the primary challenge I face daily, really is to, is to make sure that the financials work well to sustain growth into the future. We can accommodate 400 students if we want to get there. Um, but, but we've got to make sure that the finances work. So mm -hmm. um, just like any startup business, we're getting two feet on the ground and starting to, start to move. Yeah. All right, so uh, briefly here, I'd like to, uh, uh, for you to touch on, uh, each of you, a little bit, the partnerships you have with the community, because that can be important for, for all of you. We don't have much time, but if you could touch on that a little bit, what programs you have and how that works. Well, we have a very robust partners in education um, happening, as well as uh, corporate partnerships with um, Ready. He mentioned Ready is a very important partner for our career center. Um, each of our, um, whether it's local banks, uh, organizations, United Way, uh, I really feel like every aspect of our community is involved with uh, partnerships for us. Uh, but really, I think our, str our strongest partnerships, and I know it's not exactly what you're asking, but for, for us, our strongest partnerships are the families and the parents. Uh, we, we cannot do it ourselves. We need the parents, the families, and the community all working together in the same direction. And Columbia is a great place for that to happen. It is happening, and we want to continue getting better with that. But uh, partnerships really gives that community ownership that these are all our kids and that we want them to be prepared to contribute to our community. And so the families and um, parents particularly are very important partners to us. Joe's answer about families is a great, is, is a great answer when it comes to partnerships. Um, we have a number of other partnerships. That I'll just focus on one. Um, it, Be the Change is a local organization that partners with NGOs around the world and provides opportunities for people to uh, travel all over the world and, and work with these NGOs and, and whatever that particular um, NGO's work is. And so we've had a partnership with Be The Change for a number of years. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to send um, some of our upper school students every year on these trips. And, um, and one, of our, one, of our or, I'm sorry, one of our teachers goes along with the students. And so um, they've, you know, last year they went to Malawi. Um, and just in about a week, actually, they're going to go to Peru. And what they do is, um, you know, they, they prepare for the trip. And so it's an educational experience. So they're, they're preparing for the trip. They're learning about Peru. They learn about the indigenous culture. But then they also learn about some of the problems that, um, that are affecting that culture. And so um, they learn about that, about the NGO. And then they go and they see it. And you know, there was a great piece of research that came out last year about how um, the learning effect of just field trips, just regular day-long field trips has, and how not only does it cement the learning in so many ways, but it improves things like critical thinking, and it also does things like improving their um, like em empathy in other ways. And so that's been a great partnership for our school. Um, I, I'm going to agree with both of you that our families are our primary partners. Um, in education. So we work together with the families to educate the students. Our partnerships, I like to think of them running both ways. So we have corporate partners and sponsors that they really make a lot of what we do possible. 
and not have to pass that cost along to our students. So we have some great business partners in the community that, that help our school accomplish our goals. Um, but we partner with a lot of organizations as well. When we talk about developing service and a heart for service in our students, um, we, we work all year long on service projects and sending our students into the community. So we work with a number of organizations that need our help. They need our students, so our students learn what it is to work with those who are less fortunate, less blessed than they are. So Columbia is a great, is a great place for that too. So yeah. we're really pleased with all our partnerships. Okay. All right, uh, I think our time is up here. I'd like to thank uh, all of our guests for sharing with us about your schools. Uh, thank you for watching uh, League of Women Voters Presents, Columbia High Schools, Options, Challenges, and Opportunities.